Hello, my name is Regina Morris. I am a supervisor of dispatch operations at the Onondaga County Department of Emergency Communications, 911. I'd like to take this opportunity to explain what happens when you dial 911. 911 is a critical and vital link between you and the emergency responders. We dispatch for 16 police agencies, 58 fire departments, and 14 emergency services. Every phone call, every radio transmission, and every service we provide demands the utmost attention and effective response. Your call will be answered by a highly trained emergency call taker whose responsibility is to find out if the situation is a true emergency. Has anyone been injured? Is there a crime in progress? Is there a fire? If your call is determined to be a non-emergency, you may be transferred to a non-emergency line. You may experience a brief wait you may also receive a recorded message on a non-emergency line. Please do not hang up. You will lose your position in the waiting order, but a call taker will assist you with your non-emergency. Should you choose to dial any 10-digit number, such as a non-emergency number listed on a responder's website, your call comes into the 911 center, and your call will be handled in the same manner. Dialing 911, instead of a 10-digit number for any emergency agency has benefits. First of all, for ease and speed. You don't have to remember a phone number. You don't have to have it recorded in your phone. 911 is the, is the universal number for emergency assistance. When calling 911 from a wired line, such as a house phone or a business phone, the information about where you are is immediately available to the call taker. The phone company provides the phone number, address where the phone is located, who owns the phone, and which emergency responders service that area. The emergency call taker will ask you to verify the information. You may be calling from one location, but you are calling about an incident that occurs at another location, or you may have recently moved. Wireless 911 calls do not provide the exact location information as a hard, hard wire phone does. For calls with wireless information, we get location in the area where the phone is located. As technology of wireless phone continues to improve, so does getting more accurate information of location. The call take will always ask your location and the location of the incident. You may ask, why does 911 ask so many questions? The call take is your first point of contact in an emergency or non-emergency situation. We ask that you try to remain as calm as possible an excited or hysterical caller makes the process longer for the call taker to understand what you are saying. The call taker needs to ask specific questions in order to give responders an accurate picture of the situation and decide how to approach the situation. The call taker will ask very specific questions. The call taker is taking four basic questions every call for emergency responders, maybe already on their way to your call. The call taker updates the information for the responders while still speaking with you. This does not re delay emergency response. Most important, the most important question the call taker asks is where. Where is the incident located? It is vital that the call taker obtain and verify the exact location of the incident. The call for the call taker to do this, we have to ask for an address, nearest cross street. There are some streets that have the same intersecting streets, but in different jurisdictions. Or street name is the same, but one street may be end in boulevard versus road. You will be asked if this is a single family house or an apartment. Do you live upstairs or downstairs? If this is a business, is there a suite number? We may even ask you for a zip code or a landmark to verify a location. It's extremely important that the call taker get the exact and correct location. We don't want to waste resources by sending emergency service to the wrong location, such as the wrong side of town or the wrong township. This not only wastes time, but potentially can cause a loss of life and or property. The next question we ask is what? You will be asked to briefly describe what is currently happening. What is the problem that prompted your call? Are you in physical danger? Is anyone intoxicated? Are there any weapons involved? Possibly a house fire? Where is the fire? 
Is anyone trapped? Or you simply may just need a referral or information. The next basic question we ask is who? Who is involved? What is your relationship, if any, to that person? What is a person's race or gender? What are they wearing? Is the person still there? If they left, did they leave in a car or on foot? Which way did they go? If they left in a car, did you see a description of the vehicle? Did you see a license plate? How tall is that person? These questions do not delay the dispatch of the priority call. The call taker continuously updates the call notes and can raise the priority of the call if it becomes more volatile. The dispatcher will then continuously update the responders immediately. Remember, as responders are going to your location, they may come across this vehicle or a potential person that's involved. Please do not assume that the responder knows the involved persons. The next question is when. When did this incident happen? Is it going on now? Did it occur 15 minutes ago? Or did it happen several hours ago? Based on the answers to these questions and the specific coding on the event determines priority or how fast the responders need to respond. On police calls, the call taker will ask for suspect or vehicle information. Officers may come across a person or a vehicle while they are on the way to the incident. For responder safety, we'll also ask if the person is intoxicated or any weapons. We'll also be asked if you wish to speak with an officer or not. For fire calls, you'll be asked exactly what is burning, whether or not there are visible flames or just a smoke odor. If you're reporting a fire, you'll be told to get out of the structure and do not go back in for any reason. You may be asked if someone is still inside and possibly where inside of that structure. You will be asked if there's any hazards, such as chemical or construction hazards. This is done not only for responder safety, but it also allows the responders to, res to plan potential additional resources. On medical calls, you'll be asked the age of the patient. Is the patient conscious, awake? Is the patient breathing? What is the main medical reason for your call? Is the person having difficulty breathing, chest pains, or seizure? You'll be asked if you know how to do CPR. You'll be given instructions to help the patient until responders arrive, and this may include CPR. For additional responder safety, we'll ask if there's a dog on the scene, and we will ask you to put the dog away. If any weapons are, are involved, we'll ask the weapons be put away and ask for the location of the weapons. Since we are currently going through a pandemic, we will also ask, has anyone have COVID or been exposed to it. The call taker is re required to ask your name and number. This is in case we need to call you back for any additional information, or the responders need to talk to someone who actually saw what happened. You do not have to get to ne your name. Your call will still be handled appropriately. Once the basic information is obtained, your call is coded with a proper incident code and priority then sent to the dispatcher through our computer system. If the incident requires response from the police, fire, and EMS services, they will all get the same information at the same time. They will also get any additional notes that the call taker provides at the same time. If the incident only requires police response, the call will only go to a police dispatcher based on the incident coding. The time it takes for our responders to arrive on an incident depends, depends on several factors. All calls are given a priority based on the incident type and whether the incident is considered in progress, just occurred, or an investigation. The priorities assigned to each incident type are predetermined by the responding agencies, not 911. A medical call, a fire, shooting, or a fight take higher priority than a parking violation or a loud party. Other factors which may res affect response time is weather. How fast can a responder drive to your location? How far away is that responder from your location? How busy is the agency at the time? Based on this, calls with low priorities may have to wait until a unit is available while the agency is handling higher priority calls. 911 also provides support to our responders. 
the dispatch is able to advise and respond if anyone involved in an incident has possibly a warrant. We have license plate information. The dispatcher can, can advise the police officer of all registration information and if the vehicle is stolen. Once an officer arrives on the scene of an incident, if a tow truck is needed, a tree or wire is down or needs to be removed, if a street light is out or a road needs to be salted, a 911 dispatcher will call the proper agency at the officer's request to have these needs resolved. I hope this gives you a better understanding of the operations of the 911 center. We are a critical and vital link between the citizens of Onondaga County and public safety agencies. We are committed to providing the highest level of customer service to the community by treating you with dignity and respect while striving to meet your needs. We are committed to saving lives, protecting property, assisting the community in your time of need, and ensuring the safety of our first responders through prompt, accurate, impartial, and professional call taking, dispatch, and support services. We thank you for your time. Have a great day.